and welcome to a special event where we here at On Gaming and Nerdery are going to do a basic tutorial on how to play chess. Um, I we I looked at this and said, hey, all we do are video games and stuff like that. So why don't we do an actual old school board scheme? In fact, the oldest board game in recorded history. Uh, it was played as far back as the Persians during the uh, wars with Greece and Alexander the Great. Um, so. Uh, I will play as white, and Osei will play black. Um, racist. Whatever. <laughs> I do get to go first. Um, but as you can see um, with my mouse here, the center of the board is where you're going to see me open with the king's gambit. You should always tend to open with either the queen or the king. It's a very basic opening, and your opening should be focused around these four squares in the center. Whoever controls in the beginning of the game these four squares has the advantage when it comes to the middle and the end of the game. So I made my first move opening with the king's pawn up two spaces. Now Osei gets to move. It's like magic or something. Uh, it's been a long time since I played chess, so... Alright, so you can move your pawn either two spaces or one space on the opening, and then after that it can only move one space, as you can see with the highlight for the move possibilities. Right. Again, I'm going to continue focusing on the center of the board by moving my knight, which moves up to and across one, um, or up one and across three. So it moves in L's. So as you can see with my mouse, it moves in L's. A really, good, love love really good when the uh, board is all jumbled up in the beginning of the game when there's not a lot of space to be had because they can move around pieces. Uh, let's see. Now normally chess is played with a clock. Um, I turned it off so that we could um, go over the game. Um, and I have not played uh, tournament style since high school, so I am extremely rusty. Um, but normally um, tournament chess is an hour. You get an hour to make your moves. Um, an abbreviated round robin tournament can be 30 minutes uh, for your clock. And uh, whenever you're done, you move, you hit the panel on your clock and it stops and your opponent's clock starts. So it's a combined hour long game if it's 30 minutes or a combined two hour game uh, if you're playing tournament play. Right. You know, to part of me, I'm just, uh, just trying to think what to do. I've, I've never been, like I've played chess before and I used to enjoy it. It's just I'm not particularly good at it anymore. Especially because I've just gotten it's, worse and worse at planning ahead. Yeah, it's one of those things where the opening is basically like riding a bike. Once you've kind of memorized how you know you want to open a game, uh, you never really lose that. It's the uh, middle and the end of the game. And even the end of the game can be scripted, per se. Um, your checkmates should be memorized how to do them. Right. Um, but your middle game is where you really have to think a lot. Um, that's where most of your time on the clock is going to be uh, spent. As right. you can see, Osei, again, is putting pressure on the opening squares by putting pressure on my pawn, which is undefended, and by placing pressure on another of the center squares. I'm going to protect my pawn by moving up my other knight so that it is putting pressure on squares in the center and protecting my pawn. Right. Now, the trick to white is to keep the tempo by placing more pressure on your opponent since you got to go first if black ever gets to start a tempo move then the game is switched over to uh, black controlling the game um, so white's job is to never give up that uh, advantage if they can but if black can take that advantage um, without risking major pieces it's uh that's what the game turns. Most uh, grandmasters uh, will tell you they would rather play black than play white because uh, of the challenge and the uh, surprise of being able to take the tempo away. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do I want to do? 
You know, the only thing really missing right now, I think, is golf claps. <laughs> Too loud. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe I'm maybe I'm a Tiger Woods fan, and I just culp, uh, go, uh, golf clap very enthusiastically. Not just clap really enthusiastically. You're like, yeah, like cheer and roar. <laughs> yeah. Harden my language. Chewbacca roaring. I will put a bleep in there just for that. <laughs> Chewbacca roaring, you know. Chewbacca roaring, yes. With all that. As you can see, again, you can move your pawn up two spaces. And because Osei opened this pawn to keep that chain over here, I was able to, again, take the initiative and more in the center. Right. And just because, to point this out for people who aren't looking at the full strategy, um, my bishops now have free reign to move out of the board, as does my queen. So since bishops move on the diagonals of their color they're on, as you can see mine with my mouse movements are open to moving on diagonals. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Uh, I don't even know. I'm, I'm probably going to have to stop this in about another five minutes and then we'll start up another episode. I don't want these to be too long. Uh, mm -hmm. But Osei, did you know what the, what the, where the phrase checkmate came from? Not you know. It is from the Persian of uh, the king is dead or the king is helpless. And that's where the phrase checkmate comes from. That's interesting. It's the l literal translation to English is uh, checkmate. I don't know the literal translation of their version of checkmate is the king is the king is dead or the king is helpless. So, little known facts. Also, this goes right up on our alley with our uh, Company of Heroes uh, Soviet playthrough because this is how um, Soviet uh, generals were chosen. Was how good they were at playing chess. Really? Mm-hmm. Oddly enough. Hmm. As you can see, I've, I'm attacking his knight. Now, he could take my pawn, but I can take him in two different ways right. with my pieces. So my piece is not protected just once, but twice. Double or triple protected uh, squares is always a good thing to have because then you can win a trade-off war, which is where someone takes a piece, you take a piece, they take it back. And if you end up taking the last piece in that trade-off, you win, depending upon if you haven't left something wide open for an attack like the king. Are you okay there? Yeah. Oh. Let's see what I want to do now. Um, I'm going to annoy his pawn, uh, knight some more. <laughs> see, the knight on the side is not as powerful as one in the center of the board. He has less spaces to move on the side, so the fact that I forced Osei to move away from the center um, weakens his knight's abilities. Now, they're still dangerous, even on the side, because you can forget about them. But as you can see, um, Osei's uh, ability to cover the center of the board is now down to just two pieces. And uh, I'm threatening one of those pieces right now. So as, long as, so as long as you can learn that basic step in this video, is that the center of the board is vastly important to the rest of your chess game. So if you can control the center... Um, without losing pieces or losing pieces you're you know that you're not expecting to trade off with someone else um, you're gonna have a better chance black or white at uh, playing the game 
after Osei makes his move, we'll cut the video here and we'll do the middle game, because that's what will be up next after Osei makes his move, is the middle game will begin. Hmm. Those will probably, middle game will probably end up being two or three videos. It takes the longest out of all of them, out of all the stages of chess. So, Right. The opening is the first seven, six moves. And of course, barring successfully pulling off a blitzkrieg of some form. Um, it's very difficult to checkmate in the first six moves. It is almost impossible. Not impossible, but very damn. No, it's not impossible. It's just you have to be facing someone who isn't attentive at all. <laughs> this is true. Next time on this chess let's play. <laughs>